From the Fathead Studio in Speedway, Indiana, this is The Skinny. Man, am I still pretty? And he's like, you ain't pretty, but you're going to be all right. Now I'm just hanging on, looking at the wall, like flying this way. I'm like, oh, man, I got to let go of this thing at some point. And then there's one that could literally pick you up. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, I'm not really sure about that, but yeah. That's called a helicopter. Well, <laughs> and the last lap was just chaos. I mean, like four wide, five wide. It's like, whatever. If you land it and send it into the fence, you're probably not going to get hurt. Bounce and then this insane roll, the car that Keegan was in. I mean, it. I don't know if it's the shape of the Beetle or what, but that thing sent it. So I was a supercharger specialist on my uh, old man's car. With specialist? Robert. Yeah, it sounds cooler than crew guy. <laughs> <laughs> I am Tony Stewart. I'm Mario Andretti. I'm Christy Lee. I'm Alexander Rossi. I'm Cruz Pedregon. Hi, I'm Bubba the Love Sponge, and this is The Skin. Sit down, hold on, no telling where this show's going to go. Welcome to the Skinny. I'm Ken Stout, the big man sitting alongside. That is Rico Elmore, the track dude behind the controls. He is over there. That is Michael Young. And then we have Bubba the Love Sponge. Wait a minute. There's one more. She's sitting off to the side. Her name is I Am Erica. I, I am said, Erica. what's your name? She said, I am Erica. Well, I call her the merch crick because she does all my merchandising, <laughs> you know, but she's also my girlfriend. She's utility. She's utility. You know, she can Utilitarian. play shortstop. She can play right field. You know, she can DH. She can sit. She can be in a timeout and sit on the bench for a day or two. You know how we do. Like it. Like it. <laughs> Great stuff, man. We Hey, thanks for taking the time to be on the show. For hey. starters, we're on Mav TV, so we have to be at least... Have you ever dealt with the your, FCC? You, listen, guys, listen. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not trying to uh, uh, override your author, authority, authority, but uh, I know more about broadcast law than any of three of you combined, unfortunately. <laughs> I, got, I am the highest fined uh, broadcaster in the history of our country at $755,000 for seven utterances of obscenity. So I, since 04, have not uttered one bad word over terrestrial and or uh, any other airwaves. And I'm going to call that BS, Well, but I appreciate you. No, I, no, I, do have, I do have some one form. many fines, isn't it? It was, it was seven fines times 27,000. Oh, that's right. Well, hold station. on. It was seven. It was 27,500 per fine times how many stations I was syndicated on. And it ended up being $755,000 <laughs> that I didn't have that they, they fired me you're immediately. Like, Wait on. a minute. My pay doesn't work that way. You know, I, I was watching the TV the day before they fired me and they were having congressional hearings about obscenity and they, my name was coming up quite often, and I turned <laughs> to my producer and I said, I don't think it's good when the, you're having congressional hearings with your name in them. It's usually not a good thing, you know? So yeah, That's a bad day. That's led me down here to this basement called the Skinny. Let's let, <laughs> let's let this thing rip. That was almost <laughs> one right there. <laughs> let's let this little thing go. Let's go. <laughs> Billboard Personality of the Year, number one radio show for a long time. And you're still down there in, in the Pinellas County area. Tampa, Florida. been there since 92. Prior to that, my radio career took me Terre Haute, Grand Rapids, San Antonio, Chicago, Philly, Orlando, Chicago, Milwaukee, Tampa. Wow. And then once I got to Tampa in 92, we started syndicating it and was, you know, at one time had like... I don't know, 20 affiliates. And then I my, had all the cities written down so I could read well, them off in order, but I don't need no, to. I'm far, I'm, 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 far, them, I'm, far more I'm far more efficient than you, my friend. This might be the you might this you might be the first guest that's actually a better broadcaster than you. I'm just saying, my friend. I, yeah, well, I, I, figured I don't drive race the, cars, I'm not entertained. I can, you know, get in the you know, in that next bubble wheel power or nothing like that. But I know radio like <laughs> I'm there right now. I figured by the end of the show you'd probably have this seat and I'd be sitting over there. So yeah, we'll be out in the hall. <laughs> You'll just be things, so. But I am a track owner. I'm very familiar with racing. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, uh, and so I guess I probably, you know, wear a couple different hats. As I, I don't even know why you guys would want me as a guest, but nonetheless, I'm doing it as a. We were free. running out of people. Yeah, I'm right down there just at the bottom right. of the barrel. <laughs> I'm right when you, when you got Bubba the Love Sponge on that. You're either onto something big or you're about over. So. Uh, native Hoosier. Yeah, Warsaw, Indiana. Listen, yeah. class class of '84. Like which that. Is right, your guys' power alley. I'm, I'm probably oldest guy in this room. Not God, quite. You, yeah, I'm, I think I am. Stout's really old. Uh, no, you're not older than fit. You're not older than me, are you? No, no. 
You know, that's what's that really you feel good. That's what, but out. you know what? That's what's really freaking me out now, Rico. Because you used to, you know, I was in my thirties and my forties. Used to be the youngest guy. Well, right? when I was hanging out with Howard Stern and hanging out with Hulk Hogan and some of the great people I hang out with, I was always the young gun. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm officially like the oldest guy in the room. You're you the know? old dude. I know I'm younger than Rico, and look how old he is. <laughs> I think that you and I, if I remember right, are we're born two days apart from each other, same year. Six years, so now who's but who's who's I'm 23rd, you're 27, 25th, 25th. I'm I'm great at math, yeah. Um, yeah, that was, yeah, that was really good math for two. Hold on, can do math. but, but those listen, can and those that can't listen, board off, Willie. I'm still older than you are. You are, you saying. are okay. I'll give you that, but it's only by two days. I know, but I gotta tell you, I think you carry it better than me. I really do. I think you look a little better than me. <laughs> if we were at the hip hugger in Kokomo, I think the girls yeah, would go there for you go. You well, uh, unless unless Rico financed the deal, then then I'd be in front. Yeah. So there's a stack of ones on the table. Hey, how m- show of hands of how many have been to the hip hugger in Kokomo? I've never. I've oh, heard. Come of. on. Oh, you are, come on. You, we have some liars in this room, ladies right. and gentlemen. I'm just telling you that right now. There's only one. There's only one guy that's, that's transparent. Did Board Up Willie it, hold his hand up? By oh, the way, yeah. new name. Board Up Willie. The new studio. Yeah, that's my new name. The, from board track up. dude to Board Up Willie. Board, board Up Willie held it. Yeah. Me and him. I fell in love with the hip hugger when I was going out at 18. I did. Did you take some change in there so they could play the jukebox? No, for but their, uh, I was music? coming. I was I was going to Indiana State, 1984, fall of '84. One semester after I flunked out, I'm there, and uh, I only made it one semester, and I flunked out because I got to college. I'm like, man, there's no rules. Like your mom and dad aren't telling you when to go to bed. You can order pizzas late at night. You know, you, you can, can do your homework or not. You can do steroids and lift weights all day and blow off class. I mean, you can do all the cool That's stuff. Amazing. And so, uh, I my mom said you got to come home for Thanksgiving because I wasn't even going to come home. I was what what I wasn't having any fun in Warsaw, Indiana. But I was rolling like a pimp in Terre Haute. So I, I, I'm, I'm driving my 1974 Ford Maverick, and, the, and I see the hip hugger, you know, when I, cause I'm driving to Warsaw. And I'm like, flashing hmm. light there yeah, on 31. Pull right around the back there, and I get in there, and this girl gives me my lap. Of course, I get my first lap dance. It's the first girl that asked me. And then, uh, you know, she just starts working me. I'm so, we don't have that. We don't have strip joints in Warsaw. And the only one in Terre Haute's the Sixth Avenue Bar, home of the stretch marks and methamphetamine, and so uh, I uh, or crack back in the day. So hip, I go to the hip hugger, and this chick tells me she likes me. You know, she likes me. Well, I drop every ninety, all ninety four dollars I had. You're done. No out, gas money to window. get home. Nothing. And she gives me this fake phone number, right? But I think it's a real number. So I get home late that night. My mom goes, you know, usually you're be you're home. I'm like, well, I I had a friend in Kokomo to see. And I and so I call the number. Oh, sure is enough. Next day, do do do. The number you have reached is no longer in service. Well, she probably ran out of minutes over the holiday. There was no cell phone back then. It was like <laughs> it was landline <laughs> Willie. Was the one if you you li- I think it might have been Rotary Jones too. I think you were. And if you had the one on the on the wall with the really really long cord, you were living, man. If your cord could go from here to Rico, you were the man. Oh yeah, yeah. You could sit on the couch and watch TV and just trip everybody that was coming through the room. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. There's plenty more. We'll be right back. House. After Larry Bird left here, I hope there ain't nothing going on. I mean, there ain't no superstars. The Skinny is brought to you by Fatheads Eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear, hardcore since 04. And American Coach, innovation is our life force. Welcome back to The Skinny. We have Bubba Love Sponge on the show with us, so we can't get a word in sideways, but that's all right. He's the guest. That's what it's all What'd about. What do you expect, man? I mean, you bring a radio guy into a podcast with a couple of, you know... We're not a podcast anymore. We're a TV show, pal. Full-blown distribution entertainment we're a show. That's what okay? we're talking yeah. about here. Full-blown yeah. distribution, Mav TV. Is it Larry Plummer? Did he change your life? Oh, well, Larry Plummer's my best friend. That's, that's where I'm headed to, to Warsaw. Not so. Larry the Plummer. Larry Plummer. No, Larry, or the Larry Plummer. Okay. The, the Larry the, the. Met him in kindergarten, 1970, 1969. Met him in kindergarten, and we've stayed best friends ever since. Dude, that's awesome. Great guy. Did Just, you live close to him? Or, I mean, where did yeah, you oh, yeah, we grew up, we grew up like three quarters of a mile. So he'd come pick me up on his, uh, like on his uh, Honda 125 Enduro. Back when we were like eighth grade, both were weighing about a buck eighty, you know, and just bogging that thing down, you know, and, and just having fun. And then we take we go back to the to the to the trails, and he'd get a ride like three laps, and then I'd get a ride like three laps, and then we you know ride three laps, you know, back in the day when kids had to share, 
and you know not and you could actually be told no kids you, could, now, you couldn't be crying to your mom no you couldn't and, be crying and, and if you would, rack they your, would take it away from and you. if you fall over and rack up your stuff your mom would take it away from you so you'd you know not more yeah. worry about that big you'd ass. wear a long sleeve shirt because sure. you had a strawberry all the way up your arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> But so as I read it, you were going to go into dentistry, and it was him that said, "Dude, what are you doing, man? You, I, you need to be in radio." I I, I was going to be a dentist, and I don't that know, is a frightening. I, I mean, I'm stu- I mean, I am. I cannot. I got so I'm so not good at reading a book and studying and having to sit in down in a place and be normal for. I just can't do that, and you know. So Larry's, I'm at Indiana State. Of course, to be a dentist, you got to go all four years of. I couldn't even make it through a semester of general, you know, just the regular stuff you got to take, let alone the 10 years of med school. You've been the coolest damn dentist ever, though. No, I've never been the brokest dentist because I wouldn't have made it. So I got into radio. He's He's drilling teeth for no reason. So my buddy buddy said, listen, you need to get into radio or something like that. And I'm like, "Ah, you know, what? I mean. Where was that? Where were you bouncing? Because I read that... uh... Uh, jubilation where yeah and jubilation terre haute indiana terre haute okay there, and so there, the story is there is because they had like a franchise of those right was there well, not? Th- this one was owned by some iranian guy or something like that yeah and he uh was really really rich and really really mean and i was bouncing there <laughs> and he goes there was this radio personality named scary carrie gray he was the most popular guy in terre haute and uh but he and he was the, he was the big guy on the radio he was the the big popular guy and uh, and so that big morning drive in Terre Haute afternoon, oh, nonetheless, afternoon, so. yeah. But he was in between <laughs> Janet Jackson's and Falco Rock Me Armadeus. You know, he was able to get a cup. It was it was everybody mm-hmm. leaving the penitentiary. They would have something <laughs> yeah. to listen to on their way. You know, hey, two uh, red lights. They were backed up. So. Uh, trivia question for you. You know, the federal execution chamber is in Terre Haute, Indiana. Oh. Federally, they can only kill you in one place, and. And that's where Timothy McVeigh and I rode my Harley. Me and a bunch of guys rode out there. Oh, it's and it's in the middle of nowhere. In one side of town, it was everybody that was for it, and the other side of town, it was everybody that was against it. Terre Haute, and is they a- met up in town and were just raising all kinds that came with each other about it. Wow! And we were just, and I mean, the media that was there, it was absolutely I, well, the day that atmosphere. the day that McVeigh, they killed McVeigh I had a guy that was uh, my buddy who was a Terre Haute Police Department guy and they brought in you know like like Indiana state state troopers and because it was a big was big deal oh, well yeah. he died like at 9:30 was like their official thing well my guy was one of the inner circle guys that like were around the actual chamber you know, like was on yeah. foot outside the because the chamber says little little room, like a little facility right next to the penitentiary. Well, my buddy calls me. I'm live on the air in Tampa, syndicated, and yet like at nine eleven, he actually, by the time the media got it, it was like nine twenty eight, nine twenty nine. Well, at nine twelve, my buddy sneaks a, sneaks a call to me and says he's officially dead. So I get on the air at. I had the scoop about 10 minutes earlier before Fox and CNN and everybody had it. And I got in trouble from that. They're like, you know, you, that's, that's pretty big. That's it's a pretty, pretty big, big, you know, that's a pretty big thing to think that you have the scoop on. You, you better be right. And I was right. Yeah. I was right when they looked at the time of the death. The time the, of death. Yeah. yeah I was, they were just mad because I scooped them. So, yeah. you know, just because I had a little inside willy. Yeah. But I was in, I was bouncing at this place in, called Jubilation. And they had this, every Thursday night, they had this guy named Scary Cary Gray that came in and hosted the Naughty Nighty contest. Well, I'm just a bouncer. And so Hassan, the owner of the place, because he goes, I tell you something, that radio guy comes in and he's only supposed to host the show. He goes into the back and creeps out the girls because the girls are getting ready. They're putting their naughty nighties on. Well, he thinks because he's the DJ, he can go back. He there. thinks he's Baba. <clears throat> right. Well, he thinks he's carte blanche. So I was supposed to stop him and just give him the microphone and tell him to stay on stage and the girls would come out. So here comes this guy. This is like literally the week before April 1st of 1986, because my first day on the air was April 1st of 1986, and it started out like this. So this guy walks up. He's a little skinny dude, kind of like board op Willie, and he goes, um, <laughs> hey, I'm Kerry Gray from 103 PFR, and I'm supposed to host a contest tonight, and so I need to go back to the back and sign up all the girls and all that kind of stuff, and I go... Uh uh-uh. uh. I already have been told about you. My boss man told me that you need to stay right here on the stage. I'll bring you your microphone. And then here's the sentence that changed my life. I said, 
so you're on the radio, huh? He goes, yeah. I go, how hard can that be? I mean, you just get on there and, you know, say some stuff, try to be funny, try to be entertaining. And he goes, I said, that can't be that hard, and it must be fun. And he goes, I'll tell you what, if you think you really could do it, on April 1st, we have this contest where we just take regular schmoes off the road, and we let them be the DJs for the day as an April Fool's. I go, I, I, so I got to be his schmuck for the day. So I go in there on April 1st, 1986, and, and um, they're not really letting you do it. They're putting you behind a microphone, and they're running all the controls, and I'm just literally saying 103 PFR, Wabash Valley weather tonight, low tonight, uh, 49, high today, 65. Currently, it's 39 rocking degrees at Wabash Valley's number one hit FM, 103 PFR. Now here's Rock Me Armadeus from Falco on your number one hit station. <laughs> Like, you know, you, they, it's got it all written out for you. You know, you can't get on there and say, hey, I'm Bubba Clem, looking for some freaks. How about all you del- <laughs> your, your tri-delts down there? Let's have a No Panties Thursday party. Let's get some crazy little freaks up in this place. Put them on the glass. You know, all the stuff I want to say. So, but, so I figure out the phone lines start ringing, and all these girls are calling because we're on a top 40 radio station, so it skews you know, women 18 to 34. And I quickly figure out that, hey, the guy on the radio is kind of perceived in these small towns as the guy. You know, we don't have a professional. At, you know, Terry, was, after Larry Bird left Terre Haute, there ain't nothing going on. I mean, there ain't no superstars. Do you think you're ever going to actually be able to make a living in radio? You think you're going to be Wolf? Are you the next Wolfman Jack? Like, you're going to miss, you're going to screw up our entire family's Christmas because you want to play radio for four hours? Welcome back to the Fathead's Eyewear Studio. We're in Speedway, Indiana, just down the street from that famous place known as Indianapolis Motor Speedway. In you some are bad, watching the dude, bad skinny studios. Bad studios. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Bubba the Love Sponge sitting in the studio with us. Great to have him with us, of course. All kinds of crazy stories that are coming out of uh, anywhere. And Motor City Madman, I heard, is behind the, the controls he here today. Oh, I, I was in Toledo when Bubba was on the rise. And uh, we, we you, shared. And you were in Toledo and I was on the rise. You were What's on the rise. What's that ri- telling you? Well, uh, yeah. yeah, I was on the rise. Toledo, there's no way to shine that turret up. Toledo. No. It, let's was be always, it was always in Toledo. But was, IOT was, a, was the great station. Rock. Yes. Was the st- I, had a, I, got, I, I was syndicated at night in IOT for yep. a minute. Yes, you were. For a minute. Yeah, I, I was, said some controversial stuff about abortion or something, and it, I got thrown right and out. And that was the end of that. Yeah, throwed. pretty well got done with it. The through, throwed, whatever. Throwed. I'm in Indiana, so we call it throwed. I, did, hey, I spent two days Keyboard with Willie and Motor City Madman. We just did. I mean, I, you're I just standing got, nameplate I know. today. I yes. just got. I just spent three days with Sumo, so it's throwed and it's blowed. Yeah, you know, throwed, <laughs> yeah. blowed. You know, code, shoulder, goad. Corns on the cobs, you know all the Indiana corns stuff. Corns on the cobs. Yeah. yeah. So, there so are corns on so, the cob. <laughs> so anyway, I I I got this guy, this Kerry Gray guy, and he's had like a bunch of DUIs. And the general manager takes me aside, and you know I've, I've been I, I was always responsible. I always had a nice car, you know, you know. So I did never never really had any drug or alcohol issues. But t- but you know, in order to be a radio personality, you have to have some kind of vice, and. Uh, this guy is a superstar in Terre Haute, but he has, he can't drive. So the general manager takes me aside and says, listen, we'll let you do overnights, you know, which is where you put the worst guy, <clears throat> you know, the, you know, and uh, if you just be Cary Gray's driver and take him to all his gigs and all his appearances and, and pay and, and make sure he gets his rent paid. I'm just going to be his roommate too. make sure all the bills get is this paid after you've. I mean, got I got thrown out of school. Yeah, I got th- well. I quit school because I was going to now be this radio personality's handler. You know what I'm saying? But your f- parents had to be. Ecstatic. Oh, they were. So, as we'll, Board Op Willie will tell you, I did overnights, and that's where they put the guy that can, you know, with a speech impediment. That's you know, it's usually the overnights guy. Yeah. Nice. So, and I'm just a tag about that. So, but during holidays, during Christmas and stuff, a lot of times they'll let the part-time guys, the real, real, do like a primetime shift during Christmas because all the full-timers are gone. So I remember calling my mom in Christmas of 86 because they were going to let me do like noon to four on Christmas Day. So I call my mom up and I say, hey, I'm not going to make Christmas this year because I got my big, chi- my big shot. She goes, what are you talking about? I go, 
I got a chance to do noon to four. And my, I can remember this like it was nothing. My mom cussed me out. She goes, do you think you're ever going to actually be able to make a living in radio? You think you're going to be Wolf? You, are you the next Wolfman Jack? Like you're going to miss, you're going to screw up our entire family's Christmas because you want to play radio for four hours? What are you making? I'm like, well, I'm making eight bucks an hour or six bucks an hour or whatever I'm making. <clears throat> you know, but it's the opportunity, mom. It's the opportunity to be on primetime. She goes, Nobody listens to the radio noon to four on Christmas. They're open presents with their family. So I, as I'm driving Carrie around town, I can see that he's, you know, he's the top guy. You know, he's the Tony Schumacher. He's the Tony Stewart. You know, he's the Kyle Larson. And so everywhere we go, all, and he's not a very attractive man. You know, he's just not. Man, uh, we had a spider you coming down it? in these studios. Yeah, there's really that? nothing there, but I'm there's glad you There's nothing there, but it. go ahead. Okay, maybe it's my early morning setup. I'm sorry. I've already driven from Columbus. But anyway... Um, I see that everywhere we go, everybody's flipping out over the guy on the radio. Free pizzas, free you know, free tabs, you know, girls that are way above you could score regularly, ready to do cool stuff with you, you know. And I'm like, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I can figure stuff out. I'm like, I need to get on the radio full time so that I can get in on this free stuff. Now, you got to understand, radio back in the 80s, oh, just up until, you know, 10 years ago, was the currency. It was the currency that kept the community together. So if you wanted to know, right now, if you want to know what's happening, you go to Facebook, you go to Twitter, you go to YouTube, you go to you know, Snapchat, you go to all your various places, and you were, you, radio, or the most popular guy on the radio, was the official social influencer of the community. So you, at that point, got all the, you know, all the chicks, you know, all the you know, illicit stuff, ran through you you were the cool guy that told people what was happening in the community so you know when i got into radio that's that was i i benefited from that greatly did you spend time at the uh Terre Haute action track yeah you know what from 84 until 88 i think there was a four-year period was it was where it wasn't open and you know i came from warsaw where jim tony elliott yeah. bimbo atkins and tony elliott's dad jim elliott you know, and then we would go down to Kokomo, Gas City. So, you know, growing up, I, I would hit these dirt tracks, and I was kind of, you know, a dirt track fan. And no, Terre Haute wasn't. I didn't ever see a race in Terre Haute. Yeah, it was. It was shut down for a little while. And so I never. I drive by it and say, God, that's a big half mile because that was, you know, I don't know. I was used to Kokomo. Uh, Gas the City. Kokomo used to be flat. <clears throat> yeah. It used to be flat before they. its current I never really ventured, you know, south of Kokomo. So I hit Gas City, Kokomo, and Warsaw when Warsaw was running. Does anybody Port remember what it says on the gate at, at uh, Terre Haute? When you go through, it's like through these gates are the, come the uh, that greatest was, drivers think, of the world. I think that's or, in Winchester. Well, the Winchester, the Winchester has one, but too. Terre Haute has one too because and, but think, they, they and think about the, the studs that have. I mean, the they Gary would run the cars out there, and it was the path to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It was. Where they would run the big cars. It yeah. was. You know, was Johnny a, there Rutherford, was a sign there the Poncho, the, gate. the Poncho yeah. Carters, you know, the the AJ Foyts, the Mario, and they all ran through. Terre Haute might have in Indiana the the biggest history of people that went on to be great. I mean, yeah. Terre Haute might be that track. That the common denominator of you know Mario, AJ, Tony, you know I'm sure Larson's run Terre Haute before Gordon, you know they've all been through Terre Haute, you know Poncho, the Bentonhausens. Oh, historic you know. track, no question about it. As it always does on this show, it morphs back to racing. We got to. We I mean, we got to kind of do racing. Don't <laughs> We're going to we? take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more from Bubba the Love Sponge. Where I wave to the crowd. Yeah. So I'm flipping with no arm restraints in my hand. It's like a wonder I'm not a double amputee. You know, you know cut off the shoulder. Absolutely. Zone. And I, I'm out. I'm out. Of, I'm actually out of the car, flipping into turn one. We have Bubba, the love sponge, on the show with us here today. So I'm curious. I read in there, and I don't know if this is before or after the whole Terre Haute radio thing, but. You were doing van conversions there for a little while. Before yep. or after all that? <laughs> or in the middle of? Oh, I did it. That's of a war song. Now, where'd you get? Where, who, who'd you Google? For? I mean, like. Yeah. That's all right. Don't yeah, worry about it. I, uh, Don't worry about my pulled sources. Up your tax, <laughs> I, uh, you pulled up your tax records where you got W-2s <laughs> from. <laughs> Back when you paid them. <laughs> Man. I'm a little behind on my taxes right now. I just didn't offer a compromise, if you know what that means. <laughs> 
it's, they're going to approve or disapprove my payment program. But uh, yeah, I, I in between my last two summers of high school, I, my buddy owns Explorer Van Conversions in Indiana, and um, I was working for the Warsaw Park Department. Uh, but I figured, you know, oh man, maybe doing van conversions would be a little easier than out here weed whipping, you know, Pike Lake. And uh, and my buddy Larry Plummer wasn't in charge yet because he's a superintendent. There's this guy named Dick Hammond, and he was just he hated me. He hated me. Did and you it, give him any good reason to? No, just well, yeah, because the mayor of the city <laughs> was my. Think about that. For <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> so the mayor of the city, I was a, I was a, I was a push down, meaning. I was pushed down his throat. So the mayor of the city was my family's good friend. So he went down to the park department and said, hey, Dick Hammond, you're going to hire this guy right here to be a temporary, you know, the, the summer help. Well, it was horrible. And it was, I was cleaning toilets. They called me Colonel of the Urinal and Flush Gordon. Anyway, I cleaned public bathrooms, which is the worst. So I decided to go out to Explorer Van, ask my buddy who owned it. Now, the guy who owned the company at one time was my seventh grade social studies teacher. So he's like, yeah, yeah. We'll give How you a would job. he not know not to hire you then if he was your school teacher? Oh, he was my buddy, and he so his buddy really jobbed me out. He goes, "Go, go, go, talk to Bozo. That's the the main dude that ran the production line." Okay, his real name? No, his real name's Gary Cohen, but he, and they called him Bozo, and he was employee. He's like Jeff Patterson for for Tony Stewart. Yep. he's employee yep. one. Yep. you know, yep. Gooch was literally oh, yeah. Tony's first Absolutely. hire. Absolutely. So. Bozo was Explorer Van's Gooch employee one, and he ran the whole line. But he didn't know how good I was in with, with the owner. He just knew that there was a new kid reporting in. So I go, hey, Bozo, my name's Bub. I'm supposed to report to you from Steve. He goes, right to installation, uh, insulation. So now I'm the guy that's putting the insulation on the walls. And, you know, you get all that insulation. Yeah, you go oh. home and feel like you've been cut oh. up. And so oh. then the guys there, they knew I was a rookie. So they go, they come to me and go, hey, you need to go home and take the hottest shower you can <laughs> to get that off. So I'm thinking, okay. Because they're, they're, these are trying to help me. Well, when you take a hot shower, it opens up your pores. Yeah. You know, and so I take the hottest shower I can stand. Well, now my arms, look, I look like Lobster Boy. My arms are all red and stuff. So, yeah, I did, I did insulation for two summers at Explorer Van prior to being the colonel of the urinal, uh, post being Flush Gordon and colonel of the urinal. You were working your way through to figure out that you wanted to be in And now room. look at me now. Now I'm in the Fathead Studios on the Skinny Show. With you, how much with, better with, it gets. With, yeah, with, I mean, with, with even you walked in and said this is a nice studio. Well, Ken, I saw these studios when they were in R and D. I saw uh, these studios before they did broadcast did one when it still had asbestos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was before we took the asbestos. Right. Speaking of, that was hot right showers. after Rico kicked me out of his house, and I couldn't. I was supposed to sleep on his couch during an indie. And you guys know that story. You guys know I that. Story? Know we're that. probably not going to yeah, go yeah, down that road. Maybe just a little bit of it. Not probably gonna do that. It's a good today. story. It's a it's real not good really story. That great. It's a real good story. Well, I guess it depends with the, on hey, what with, you're hey, with the Penny Pinsky <laughs> kicker. Yeah, can we talk to you about uh, your chili bowl race? Oh, yeah. You fit in a midget? How about that? Yeah. That that came came out out so, me and Lasowski. <laughs> hey, that's you pretty so hard. Me, me, me and Lasowski. He first blood. Yeah. <laughs> it was a fat and a midget. <clears throat> I tell you, I had some great left side weight, though, boy. I could really get around them corners. <laughs> Those guys were going high side willy, and I was just sucking the bottom. Really a lot of forward some... bite. Oh, man. <laughs> well, hold on. Forward bite is what got me to flip over because I'd only driven a 360 wing sprint. And, you know, you got that front wing on it. And this is in 2005, Chili Bull of 05. And so I'm driving for Lasowski. Tony and Brett Hearn. Didn't Tony oh. win it that year? I th no, no, he didn't win it that year. I don't think. So... I'm at PRI in 04, and Jerry Russell says, hey, listen, if you're going to drive one of these things, you need to drive over to my shop because we're going to have to move the steering box up. And, you know, I weighed 290 pounds. I weighed about what I weigh. I weigh about 280 right now. So I'm with it. I'm about the same size. Racing and, weight. Yeah, racing weight. Yeah. So, um, you know, most of these guys weigh, you know, like Buddy Kofoit weighs what, 110? Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm rolling in there at 295. <laughs> 4X Willie. <clears throat> probably either, I might be the heaviest guy ever to. You know what? We might want to check that, but I might be. Oh, the there's heaviest. a couple of big boys that have that have been in there. Nobody that time, big. Nobody two ninety. Nobody that big. Nobody two ninety. I mean, the king no. got up there a little bit, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I'm driving these three sixty wing sprints with the front wing, and when you when you know when you smash a gash in those, and your front end starts getting a little light, you'll it'll come down. It'll you know like how many times have you seen at Williams Grove where they're they're lifting the left the left front up or the right front up? So. When you got a winged car, a wing sprint car, that front wing automatically takes your... Well, not in a midget. They didn't tell me that. 
So we're coming out of four, and I'm getting all kinds of grip, and I feel my front end getting a little light, you know. <clears throat> and I'm like, well, you know, you don't let, you don't lift, you just gas it. Well, I gassed it all right, and I did, you know, three or four or five flips. And so before I got in the car, I, we were scrambling around getting the car. Lasowski goes, I was going to put my arm restraints on, and and Lasowski goes. Man, th- this little place, you don't need arm restraints here. You don't go fast enough to even... Yeah, need... nobody ever flips at the Chili Bowl. Right, no. <clears throat> so, I don't have any arm restraints. And hopefully, maybe in post-production, you guys... Do you guys have my flip? Oh, yeah. You have yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, we'll put it in. <clears throat> Where I wave to the crowd? Yeah. So, I'm flipping with no arm restraints, and my hands are actually out of the car. It's little wonder I'm not a double amputee. You know, you know, cut off at the shoulder. Absolutely, Jones. dude. You're, and I, I'm out. I'm out. Of, I'm actually out of the car, flipping into turn one, uh, and so they get me out. I'm okay. And there's and there's Stewart. There's Tony and the four wheeler to pick me up, take me back to the hauler, and I have my helmet on, and I go and I go get in the hauler. Here, Tony's driving. I'm over here. I'm a little bit scrambled up, and I go to take my helmet off, and he goes, "Keep your helmet on, bud." And I go, "Why?" And he goes, "So everybody can't see how stupid you look." <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a commercial <laughs> break. We'll be right back. <laughs> but anytime I would make a mess up or make fun of him or do one of my Bubba isms, I had my keys for my golf cart taken away 42 times this weekend. This kidding is brought to you by American Coach. American Coach, innovation is our life force. And that heads eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear, hardcore since 04. Welcome back to The Skinny. That is Rico Elmore sitting right alongside. I'm Ken Stout, the track dude, keyboard willy, motor man, wow. madness. I mean, wow. he's got whatever you want to names. call him back yeah. there. I'll tell you one thing, he's a hell of a board op. And Bubba. you know what? He's a, he's a board op that can be a personality as well, and that's rare. Trust me. He's good. I actually, he, he's really solid for sure when he it is. comes to the racing thing. In fact, he's if one of you guys ever get a hair up us, your ass. He you just got that, us Kyle Kirkwood on the show just last well, week. Anytime so. one of you two think that you're all that, we could just throw him in there and put some jobber back there to run the board. So he's, don't you guys get full of yourself. It's a really good. Well, they could let me run the board. Yeah, I might, I'm just saying. And then know. we'll see how good he looks. He looked good as he, you know what I get. We'll Ken, see how his I guarantee sound. you that Bordop Willie could could be just as good as a host as you are. I'm not trying to get no heat with you, but I I can assess. He's talent. kind of he's kind of been on the radio for a few years. So yeah, he's, he's been doing saying I, I can I assess have, talent. He's no on Indy Car Radio. I can assess talent. He's good and, as hell. And, and, 25 years. I hope he could sit over here and do. Okay, a good job. quit patronizing me. I told you he was good as hell. Okay. <laughs> how do you know? Yeah, Jesus. How do you know? Do you know him? I'm just familiar, because he used to have I'm a mullet I'm familiar like yours. with his work. Just like I spewed it out, he went, was from WIOT in Toledo. Us radio guys kind of keep together a little bit. We know who's good. Was there a rule bad. to have well, a mullet if I, then? If I was the, my only claim to fame was I did afternoons in Omaha. You think I'd be in this seat right now? Oh, no, yeah, no. definitely. Like, <laughs> I would have been on two years ago. You were at the U.S. Nationals with us. Oh, what a great time. What Listen, hold on. There's a couple different ways to do the U.S. Nationals. And not everybody gets to do it your way. And so, like, there's a lot of guys that are walking three miles to the bleachers, sitting, yeah, you know, top that. row Jones, you know, 49,000 steps in one day. And then there's guys who have their fatheads golf cart with their $2 million coach, their all access pass, and they know Rico. And that's the way to do it. And that's how I did it. And you know what? Thank you, Rico, really. You're very welcome. Rico's kind of the unofficial ambassador, mayor, slash enforcer underground dark web guy of all of racing slash NASCAR slash USAC Thank slash you. Thank you. NHRA. Sweet. What did Caps say to you about me? He said, if you need anything done, good or bad, dark or not, above board or not above board, ask Rico. Because he knows where every... <laughs> That's what Caps said to him on the He said, show. above board or below board, he... Rico will have a way to get it done. He said, "He said you've got the right guy handling that." <laughs> <laughs> well, I told Capsy I had Capsy on the air, and I said, "Capsy, I said Capsy, I'm going to the U.S. Nationals, and I'm, Re- I'm Rico from Fatheads is my guy. He's the one that's got it all hooked up." And he goes, "Oh, well, you'll be well taken care of on both sides of the fence, the good and the bad." <laughs> Super great. So, so what? So where did you stay at the Super Eight? What? What? Did no, you have I going stayed in there? American Coach uh, Forty Five uh, Super Slide. That really caused a little bit of a strife between you and I because my my motorhome was a little bit nicer than it yours. was, and I didn't like that. And, no, he's upsetting. See, so Friday night, the biggest commodity at the nationals, at the U.S. nationals or any event, 
is a golf cart. That's your biggest commodity. Oh, like, yeah. you know. Well, Rico, even if you get it dirty and don't R clean it Rico up. Rico has a golf cart that he loaned me. But anytime I would make a mess up or make fun of him or do one of my Bubba-isms, I had my keys for my golf cart taken away 42 times this weekend. Straight repo. <laughs> it was over. We'll just down. I, would, I would cut on Rico, and he goes, where's, those, where's that golf cart, Fob? I need it immediately. And I, then I'd have to be like, oh, Rico, you're the best. I love you. I am like, <laughs> was it the limo cart? Was no. It no, I didn't need no limo four cart. Seater. I had a four banger. That's all I needed. Yeah. <laughs> but I had a gas one, and it was fast. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, yeah. you got to have something to get around that place. Oh. massive. Yeah. Massive. And Rico's got you dialed in. He does. And then, and then he had you parked in the dirt, right, where the dust was blowing? I don't. That doesn't matter to me. Yeah, that uh, was that. But it was nice how they were cooking all that food out there and all that dirt was well, Rico, blowing see, on it you every might morning. Find out, you might be able to find a bad thing about our experience. I'm, was I wasn't was talking about the bad thing about our experience. I was just giving the bad experience of the people that were eating that food, that dirt. Well, yeah, we didn't, you, we didn't eat any of that food. We weren't involved. <laughs> no, no, we, we catered. So, uh, uh, Rico had it full catered. That was American bar. Coach. They brought it in. Oh, Allen from American yeah. Coach. Man. Dawson's, oh, Dawson's cool. on Allen's Maine. Yeah. Man, those amazing. American coaches, man. They're Whew. gorgeous. Made in Decatur, Indiana, by the way. They are absolutely oh. gorgeous. Best. Hey, man, we got to do a short segment here, so we're going to get out, take a quick break. We'll be right back. But don't ever ask me to get involved with your money. Billboard's Personality of the Year and number one radio show host down in Florida, although syndicated in a number of different cities. We have Bubba, the love sponge, on the show with us here today. And um, Howard Stern's afternoon drive guy from 06 you know, I, to I read to where, you, where he picked you up and you became part of that program. Mm -hmm. I was living in the Northeast at the time, originally from Clearwater, yeah. Florida, by the way, oh, okay. but moved to the Northeast where my wife uh, was born and raised and had a small company up there, so listened to Stern all the time out of... New York, and I saw where you guys got together because I was curious about that shock jocks back in the time, and we he used, was we certainly we leading the rage. And we competed against each other in Orlando and Connecticut, so I would, you know, when uh, when you're a shock jock, you instantaneously talk crap about your other shock jocks. Absolutely. And so we were talking crap about each other, and, and uh, when we both, we, we were the two victims of the FCC crucifixion. You know, what started out as a television problem with the Janet Jackson nipple gate, they turned into a radio crucifixion and so howard and i were the two biggest casualties in that so when they were putting sirius xm together or, or sirius together they hadn't merged yet howard uh had his had his channel and he was going to make you know him in the morning and then try to find you know somebody in the afternoon and he couldn't you know and he's like man you know bubba bubba you know and i end up being you know crazy i i could do crazier stuff than him because there were more eyes on him in the new york studio where my studio was in Tampa, so there was a certain amount of insulation where they were like, hey, I didn't have, when girls were doing various things in coffee cans and we were doing, you know, very, a lot of stuff I can't even speak of, you know, be, uh, because they were very, very crazy. But um, uh, we, the, the serious management could say, well, that didn't happen in our building. That's, you know, 1,500 miles away in Tampa, Florida. He's a private contractor. So, you know, we would do things like poop hits the fan and, you know, all types of stripper stuff, and you know, um, I can't even really. T I can't sharing even fellowship with them, if but you will. so you guys became buddies instead oh, of yeah, adversaries. Well, so I flew up there and met him, and he's like, you know, hey, and and we got in a room just, and then I walk in this room, and you know, even if you're a radio guy, you can say if you're a radio guy and you are say a bad word about Howard Stern back then, it's because. You're, you're jealous. jealous. You're jealous. Yeah, absolutely. You're jealous. He's, he's killing it. Because he's he's he is, and he's making a ton of money. Well, I mean, not only that, but you know, at, even at that point, he had 31 affiliates. He's making 30, 40 million a year back then. You know, he's 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 the guy that he's the guy. And Scott so, Shannon was jealous. You think? Of course. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and Scott, he was making a ton of money, but not he, near he on the PLJ ninety five five. But Scott Shannon was doing things like talking up records and you know being a DJ. Howard's long form monologue radio, and that's a far different thing than. And that's what I do is long form monologue. You know, talking for fifty two minutes an hour. Uh, you know, radio, and uh, you, you know, like you guys do these short little segments and things like that. But I do, you know, I go in increments of twenty eight minutes. That's what my blocks are. So that's a lot different form of of art in radio than just you know talking up you know the new uh, the weekend record or pitbull record so that's what scott shannon was doing and so we him and i i, I walk into this room i first of all go into his to his to his agent's office don buckwald and he asked me a few questions 
And then he goes, okay, Howard's in the room three doors down. And I walk in, and no matter, I mean, it's like if you're a race car driver and you met, you know, Mario Andretti or Kyle Larson or Tony Stewart or A.J. Foyt's, you know, the Mount Rushmore of radio, of, of racing, Howard is that of radio. And I walk in, and he's, first of all, he's 6'7". You know, oh, he's six seven. I knew he was tall. I didn't no, know. he's yeah. six he's, seven. Wow. He's, he's six seven, and he wears these cat kind of work boots, and that's what he wears. So it makes him six eight. And I, I, I just remember walking in, and he stood up. And, and you goes, heard the music. Woo! No, no, no. But but I, but I, I, he goes Bubba Howard, and I go. I mean, I was like a little. Bit. And that voice like, too. He's got that those pipes. Like, Hi, hi, Howard Bubba. And he goes, let's let's sit down and talk a little bit. And then he asked me, who who have influenced you in radio? And I'm like, well, I'm a big fan of you know Phil Hendry, you know Neil Rogers, Tom Likas. You know those are those are my radio people. You know Kevin Matthews out of Chicago. Uh, you know Larry Lujak. You know those those you you of course. And uh, we just talked about radio a little bit. And he goes, listen, I have you didn't one. Talk about Kerry Gray. No, no. <clears throat> and but Howard looked at me and he goes, I have one rule. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell Sirius to hire you to do afternoon drive, but don't ever ask me to get involved with your money. You handle your money. You negotiate it yourself. You do it yourself. Don't ever ask me to get involved. So when we came at an impasse in 2011, and they were doing all these reductions and you know trying to pay Martha Stewart eight million and cut my pay, I could not call Howard because I, I promised him that. So that's where I I left in 2012 because I contractually just they, I thought they were screwing me over and uh but that was his only rule and he was so cool and so he actually came to my wedding Howard came to my wedding uh and so uh he was just he's he's very 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 much not the same person that he portrays on the air he's so kind he gave me my opp my opportunity on how I make a living now globally digitally streaming and and some terrestrial affiliation came through the global thumbprint that he afforded me to have Howard did. I will be over forever grateful for what the opportunity he gave me. That is super cool. Great story. Of course, an amazing career out of this guy right here. Plenty more to talk about. Stay with us. We'll be right back to Speedway, Indiana. Want to get the skinny on other guests in different types of motorsports? Check out our YouTube page and get the skinny. The skinny is brought to you by Fatheads Eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear, hardcore since 04. And American Coach. American Coach, innovation is our life force. Welcome back to The Skinny. We have a great show, of course, with Bubba the Love Sponge here in the studio at Speedway, Indiana. This thing is uh, absolutely loaded up. I mean, we haven't even scratched the surface of this guy's career and, and the racing side of him as well, which also runs very, very deep. So don't worry. There's going to be a part two to this. Would you get? Would you mind hanging around for one more show? Oh, I, I, I love, I absolutely. But please understand that I don't have another shirt, yeah. so it's going to be. Well, and the fact know. that we have three bouncers standing outside the door, trust me, he's not going yeah, anywhere. So. We got a couple of armed guys. <laughs> I, I'll who do are anything. Not be able to leave. I, I, I'm getting to like you, Ken. I love the guy. I love board op Willie with a Ted Nugent kicker, but I love Rico. Board, I mean, borderline. You know. We're yeah. coming down. Borderline besties right myself, there. Borderline besties. Hashtag besties. BFFs. Myself and Bernstein are coming down uh, in, a couple, in a couple of weeks for the boat races. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, the P1 uh, races? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I heard Bernstein's kind of a big deal there at Lucas. I heard he's that. He's somewhat of a big yeah, deal. Yeah. So they throw that down in Pinal on, off the beach of Clearwater, Clearwater, right? yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It is a big deal for yeah. sure. Those boats get it done. And they're dangerous. I mean, oh, how many really flyovers bad. do you see? I mean, they're dangerous. You yeah. stuff the nose on one of those, it's, oh. it's a bad day. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And the, one of those P1 boats, two million plus with the trailer. That might be, you might be getting screwed more than that than NHRA yeah. on the boat deal. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> one million percent. I mean, these guys are privateers. Very little sponsor in it, sponsorship in it right now. But the group that's leading it, it it's definitely going to get bigger. I mean, it's going to be a really, really cool deal. And uh, Locally, there's a huge buzz on it. I mean, that's a big thing to go to the boat races locally. Yeah. Have you, are you still doing, and we got to wrap up, but are you still doing the drive-through? Uh, food reviews. Food reviews. Oh, they, with, uh, with the white trash pit bull kicker in the back. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got the dog riding around the back seat. And then we do Lady and the Tramp with the French fries. And, yes. and I, I play the game called Will This Pit Bull Maul Your Face Off? That's when I play the game. <laughs> 
Wrap it up, boys. And then, and then there's another one coming up with, with scratch off tickets. Yeah, uh, homeless scratch off, scratching off with the homeless or homeless scratch off. I did my first one in Columbus, Indiana, with a guy that lives underneath the bridge. How did it go? It went really well. I gave him five dollars. Was for that it. the guy that you were talking to when I when I called? Yeah, I'm doing an interview. I'm I'm, I'm taping this thing, and Rico calls. I might just keep your call in in the in I the like segment. That. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> we're gonna wrap things up with us. Stay with us here next week, part two. Bubba will still be in the studio. There's plenty more same coming shirt. your way. Thanks same for, shirt, same, same shirt, attitude, same pants. <laughs> Nothing's going to change except for the subject. Hope you enjoyed this version of The Skinny. We'll see you next week.